Hello, so today I'm going to talk to you about using video in anthropological ethnographic research. Um, I'm going to talk about three different examples from my work, but first I want to tell you a little bit about my own background. So I'm an anthropologist originally, now my work is very interdisciplinary, I work across a range of different fields connecting anthropology with design mainly, but also with video making, um, with a range of questions in other disciplines including human geography, sociology and some engineering questions as well. Much of my work looks at technology and video is a technology that I've been using in my research right from the beginning. Now I'm going to talk about video in in ethnographic fieldwork, but the first thing I want to clear up is that I don't want to confuse that with simply ethnographic filmmaking. I trained as an ethnographic documentary maker in well, the 1990s, and um, ethnographic filmmaking is a really important, really interesting part of visual anthropology, but it's not the only way to use video in ethnographic fieldwork. And throughout my career, I've worked really hard to develop techniques of using video in ethnographic fieldwork, but techniques that draw on eth docu ethnographic documentary making practices, but that are different and that can have other functions in our work rather than just showing films of our work to other people. One of those is actually using video within the research process so that we can learn as we make video, as we follow people through the world with video, move through the world with them. Another is actually seeking to use that video to make interventions somehow in the world. So making short videos or short video clips that we can show to other people to try to actually enable them to understand something differently, very often in an applied research context. So to demonstrate that, I want to talk about three examples from my work. The first one is what I call walking with video. And I have an article which is called Walking with Video, which really demonstrates how the method can be used. Um, in the article, I write about my experiences of doing research in slow cities. And the Walking with Video article is very much about introducing the idea that when we use video in research, a lot of that can be about accompanying people as we move through the world with them. In the example in the article, I talk about how I walked around a community garden project with the person who was running with it, running it, a guy called David. And every time I visited him, he took me for a walk around the garden. And most of those times I took my video camera with me. And each time we walked around the garden, he showed me his hopes and his plans for the future of the garden, the development of the garden as it went along. And also, as he showed me what had happened in the garden, he talked about the social relationships which had developed as that garden had progressed and as it developed. So going around the garden with him meant that I walked through his world with him. I actually walked through the environment that meant something to him. And as he showed me that environment, I was able to learn with him what those meanings were, how social relationships were formed through it, and how it actually brought change about in his local community. Now, for me also, walking with video was a mode of, of understanding how people make place. As people walk around places, they actually make those places. They imagine them, they do things with them, and they encounter them. In fact, very much of the way that we encounter place is through walking, walking around it, walking through it. And in very much of my research, my research participants, especially in slow cities, always invited me to go for a walk with them, because actually knowing about a place involves moving through it. So this actually started to become quite an important aspect of my research practice. I realised that to understand people's lives and worlds, and particularly to understand how people inhabit environments, it's important to walk with them and to move with them. Very much of our time, we spend sitting, sitting at work, sitting, talking to people, but very much of the rest of our time, we actually spend moving around. So for me, one of the essential aspects of doing ethnography is moving with people. Video is the ideal research method to use when we move with people because video is a mobile technology. We take our video cameras with us, we follow people through the world, and as we walk through the world with them, we record those experiences of moving them through the world with them. We aren't always necessarily re recording exactly, or the, the objective isn't just to record what we can capture in the lens of the camera. It's not about documenting only what we can see. It's actually about taking the camera with us as we experience what's around us, what's in front of the camera, but also what's to each side of the camera, what's behind the camera. So as David McDougall, the anthropological filmmaker, says, actually what we're recording when we film with video 
is not just what we can see, but also the standpoint or the position of the filmmaker in the world. We're actually creating a recording of that position that we have in the world in that particular moment as we're engaging with the experience that the other person who's showing us their world wants to show us. So that's why I find walking with video to be very important. And actually, once I started to walk with video with research participants and film them as they took me through their worlds, I realised how much in conventional documentary practice we actually encounter those kinds of shots of actually people showing the documentary maker their world. It's a very obvious but not necessarily visible way of thinking about how we can engage with people in the world as, as ethnographic video makers and as ethnographic researchers who use video. So after the, the Slow Cities project, where I used the video, walking with video technique quite extensively to, to walk around people's worlds with them, I really started to think a little bit more about how I was using video in the rest of my research. In fact, I realised I'd already started to use the walking with video technique when I started to walk through people's homes with them. So another sphere of my research has been involved in understanding how people live in their homes. Like the research about the community garden, this research has sought to understand how people make their homes, how they make their environments in their homes, and how they experience their homes, what it feels like for them to live in their homes, and how they actually go about creating the sensory experience, the feelings of comfort, the feelings of being relaxed, or being able to do things and get things done, follow everyday routines in their homes. So again, the ideal way to understand how people experience the environment of their home, how they experience a built environment as opposed to an environment outdoors, is to actually move around that environment with them, to walk with them. And using that technique in the home is, is different from using it in a, in a much bigger public space. Um, and also, it's, on the one hand, it's private which actually enables us to inhabit that space with the research participant and also to control up to a point what's happening in that space. It enables us to control the ethics of the research to a certain extent as well. Um, because we can invite the participants to show us, and I always invite the participants to show me what they want me to show them in their homes, but to only show what they wish to. Um, the other ethics of that, and, and my other use of video, is to actually also ask people to watch the videos afterwards and to edit out anything that they don't feel comfortable with and to tell me what they don't want me to show and where they don't want me to show it. And also to tell me what they will enable me to show and, and to agree always when I ask them their permission to show it in different places. So working with people to do research in their homes involves working in a very intimate space. And you create, with the research participants, a very close encounter because you're really actually the two of you exploring that space together. Now when I work with research participants in their home with video then, very often we start off in a room that they're most interested in talking about, where they feel comfortable. And I ask them, depending on my particular research question, to actually show me what they do in that room. And also what they do in, terms, in order to make that room feel right for them. The idea of people feeling right and comfortable in their environments is at the base of, of a lot of my work because I want to know how a home or any environment can feel comfortable, what sensory aspects of that environment people need to feel for it to feel comfortable. And that can often be the key to understanding how people make their homes. So does somebody need to have a window open? Do they need to have a particular type of floor covering? Do they need to have music on? Do they need to have the doors open? Or do they need to have them closed? And asking those questions can also help us to understand how people actually care for their homes, how they need to use energy and other resources to run their homes. Um, I often also follow people around their homes with video as they perform particular tasks. So one of my projects, as I just mentioned, was about energy demand reduction. And in that project, we went from room to room, and people showed me on video actually how they went about making their rooms feel comfortable and how they used energy in that process. And another project, I was trying to understand questions around the use of water and products and sustainability in Indonesia. In that project, myself and the filmmaker I collaborated with were very interested in how people actually perform their laundry processes but again, that's a mobile process. So with the camera, we actually followed people 
around their homes and indoors and outdoors and to their washing machines and to their laundry lines as they actually perform those tasks, using the performance of those tasks and recording them on video as a way of actually understanding what was important to those and them in those tasks, what they were able to do and what they weren't able to do in terms of actually making those laundry processes environmentally sustainable or not. So by being in the task with them and using video as a way to actually enable them to show and to perform the task, we're actually able to look at the detail, to look at what it meant, look what it felt like, and to actually understand the embodied knowledge that people use when they engage in such tasks. So those are two of the projects and areas of projects that, in which I've used video, and, and in fact, where the researcher and or filmmaker becomes the person who films, who actually uses the filmmaking to understand the kind of knowledge that people have that they wouldn't normally tell you about if you just sat there and interviewed them. In, in a space that was not the space where they actually performed those tasks and had those feelings and experiences. And in, in those projects, the role of the, the researcher or video maker is, is to really also empathise with the position of the people who we're filming and to engage with their worlds and try to understand them through the camera. But it's not only, of course, filmmakers and, and researchers who can use video as a way of understanding and communicating and sharing the, the knowledge that we have. There are aspects of human knowledge that people use in all kinds of situations that they find it really hard to communicate and to talk about in words or in writing. It might be the kind of knowledge that you never usually talk about. So, for example, in our research about homes, we ask people to perform their bedtime routines Aspects of their life they'd never usually tell, any, tell anybody about or even remember verbally what they did in. But when they performed them, they were able to show us. Now, in the last example I want to talk about, which is from a, a really interesting um, project, which actually sought to understand how and why other people were using video, but very interestingly using video in ways that are very coherent with ethnographic research. Now, this is a research that I collaborated in with, with colleagues who are experts in the construction industry and in safety research. And um, in this project, we actually collaborated with a small company who used video to um, create resources for construction workers to learn how to perform tasks, workplace tasks, safely. Now, to put this in context, the construction industry is is one of, all, one of all the most dangerous industry that you could work in. People do get killed in this industry at work. There are very often news items about this in the media. It's incredibly dangerous. And obviously, the, the more that we can do as anthropologists to do applied research that makes the world safer for people, is, I think is very important. We should be engaging in, in applied research. And if we can use our skills not only as video makers to disseminate research knowledge that enables the world to hopefully become better, but also we can actually use our skills as researchers to understand how others can use video and to, to really highlight how that's become effective. I think that's another important role for us. So we did research with a small company that had been making videos for workers, as I said, to use in safety. But the really exciting thing about the way that this company had been working is that they actually used a form of participatory video as a way of making the videos in collaboration with workers. So they asked the construction workers to actually perform the task safely. They planned it with the construction workers on construction sites. They scripted the way that the videos were going to be made with the construction workers. They used their own local knowledge to actually produce those videos. What was very important was that the videos were made then and performed with the real practical knowledge of the people who have to perform those tasks. So they were performed in such ways that we saw how tasks could be done safely, but with all of the practical aspects and limitations that would be really be found on construction site built in. Now, that was important because in the construction industry, it can be complicated to ask workers to read long, long safety manuals, especially when they need to know how to perform a task on the job. Now, the construction workers were able to use those videos on the job, accessing them through their smartphones in order to be able to then learn how to perform a task safely and actually see other workers doing it. So they were actually then able to empathetically um, understand what those other workers were doing, understand the embodied experience of the other workers and learn from that, which is very different from actually trying to learn from something that's been written by somebody who's not, who doesn't actually work in that situation but is an expert. 
So again, we can start to see how video recording tasks as they're performed, as people move through the world doing things, is actually able to, able to communicate embodied knowledge that couldn't be verbalised. And the kind of things that people know about their environments, about the things around them, about how you do things, that just goes beyond words. So if we take together then those three examples, we've seen how, as a researcher, I was able to understand how people experienced their urban environments, their parks, and how they made them, how they improved them, how they felt about them, what their hopes were for them, what their fears were for them, as they actually showed me what, they, what those things were on video and performed them for me. I was also able to understand how people experienced their homes, how they went about making their homes feel right, and, and how they went about performing their domestic tasks in their homes. So I could actually understand how and why people were able to use um, particular resources like energy and water and sustainable products, and when they weren't able to use those particular resources in sustainable ways. And that research was also able to inform the way that we think about how we might design for people to live in more sustainable ways in their homes. Finally, in the last project, I was able to see how other people out in the world in, in real workplace situations were also using video as a way of actually using performances of safe workplace tasks to communicate to other people how to perform those tasks safely. So, in conclusion, as an anthropologist, I find that video actually enables me to see things that are happening in the world that wouldn't ordinarily be visible. It sounds ironic to think of video as a research tool that actually enables us to see the things that we, wouldn't, that we don't see. But actually, video is, is one of the, I think, one of the most important ways that we can engage with the world and engage with the knowledge that people have that's normally not verbalised, normally not seen. If we use video, we can invite people to show us aspects of their worlds that they would never normally show. People who participate in research know what video is. They know what it's for. They know how to speak to us with video. So being a visual anthropologist and using in video, video in research gives us the opportunity to collaborate with them to produce the kind of knowledge we need to have to be able to be active as anthropologists in the world.